Hey, good Tuesday morning, everybody. Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. We're about 24 hours or less away from some strong storms moving into the Carolinas. And Wednesday morning, and really overnight tonight into Wednesday morning, are a period of time we want you to stay weather aware and definitely charge up your cell phone, have the volume turned up for tonight because we could have some overnight and early morning storms that could pose some issues. So let me show you the setup to our west. You can see what's ongoing this morning. Here we are. We've got big time storms across the Ohio Valley. Um, the setup is pretty clear. The warm front is to our north. That's where we're seeing the biggest storms right now. Uh, that warm front is going to be serving as a focus for severe storms, and so will the cold front. So today in this area right in here to our west, and even maybe down a little bit further south, we're looking at the potential for some strong storms. So we're going to see how this is going to unfold to our west today and then move our way. So today during the day, Tuesday, daytime and evening, no issues at all. It's going to be after midnight tonight and really Wednesday morning that we're going to watch that potential for severe storms. So let me turn off the satellite data. Uh, we're going to pop on today's severe weather outlook first, and we'll kind of show you what's going on. So the area in red and then the area highlighted here, that's where our higher, highest risk is today across the Ohio Valley and down into Tennessee and into northern Alabama. Now you can see the western Carolinas. The word of caution I would give you is, remember, these outlooks go to 8 a.m. tomorrow. So this is primarily going to be between 3 a.m. and about 8 a.m tomorrow morning so that's why you see the medium risk and especially the mountains and foothills because this line is going to be coming in and eventually weakening as it pushes east now during the day tomorrow the storms could reinvigorate to our east so you see kind of it trying to jump over the piedmont a little bit i'll talk more about that when we show you the future cast but let's show the probabilities of significant tornadoes you can see the area highlighted to our west definitely the brown is a five percent probability and the green is a two percent so yeah, definitely higher west than east, and I think with things calming down overnight, that might help us out. But the hail threat, about the same, 10 maybe percent wind, though. Wind is probably going to be our biggest issue, and that's what I think will be the story going into tomorrow. So let's get right into that future cast. So I think future cast is going to lay this out pretty clearly. 9 o'clock in the morning, here we go. We'll go into the afternoon. I'm going to stop this around 3 p.m., just to show you, not much going on, but look at the line of storms developing to the west. This is what I mean by we're going to see what's coming our way because this is going to develop far to our west and be moving towards the Carolinas overnight. So we'll have an idea of how widespread the, the severe threat is and also the timing will be really clear on whether it's going to weaken. So here we are at 5 p.m., 6, 7, 8. I'll stop this at 9, or 8, or 9 p.m., excuse me. You can see still just west of the mountains, maybe some high clouds here, but that's a pretty extensive line. Two things to notice. There's a line of storms ahead of it, like right in here, and then the main cold front right there. What happens to this first line? Usually at this setup, this pushes east, and look at the time. It's after sunset now. It's going to be going into an environment with plenty of wind shear, strong lift, but lacking instability or fuel for storms. So as it pushes east, notice it kind of falls apart by 11 o'clock. And it's waiting for the next line to come in from the west and kind of reinvigorate it. So this is midnight tonight. Notice not even a storm in North Carolina except for the southwestern part. So most of our air is going to be completely fine during the day today. It's tonight you got to be worried about, as I mentioned. So we'll go to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So 2 o'clock in the morning, we start to see storms really enter the mountains. So for the mountains, people watching in the mountains, midnight to 3 a.m. is your time frame for these storms. Then we get into about 3 a.m., there it is in the mountains starts to push east so for the piedmont we're looking at time frame of probably 3 a.m to maybe 6 a.m you see 5 a.m and then 6 a.m so to me right there that's the worst of it for the piedmont including the charlotte area and one thing to note if we have individual cells like this at six o'clock in the morning some of these are the ones to watch these are the ones that could be severe um, and could have rotation so 6 a.m is really kind of plus or minus a couple hours will be the time frame to watch. Then they push to the east. They look like they weaken, and then they try to re-intensify in the afternoon ahead of the main cold front, which is going to start pushing in around noon. You can actually see new storms trying to form along the front and then pushing off to the east. So let's look at the, the fuel for these storms. We call that CAPE or instability, um, you know, thunderstorm fuel. Let's look at that real quickly in this setup. And I'm going to load these really quickly as I'm talking to you. So we'll pause it real quickly back it up so this is the thunderstorm fuel the brighter the colors um, the more fuel there is blue and greens are are pretty low you start getting yellows and above you're getting some pretty significant um, cape so during the day you expect the heating of the day a lot of cape there we go through time into the evening hours look how the cape kind of falls apart a little bit so 
this is why overnight, even though they're overnight storms, the, the threat is reduced a little bit. It's not gone. It's just more scattered or isolated instead of widespread. But there is just enough that surges up here around noon to, or actually 6, 6 a.m., excuse me, with the front. Notice the big surge coming up. Even in the middle of the night, that's pretty, pretty much, you know, that's pretty significant, I would say, for overnight Cape right there. Let me really tally that. And you can see a couple hundred joules per kilogram. So that's that's enough energy to produce storms. The question is how severe are they going to be and right now that's not enough until about right there so 6 7 a.m yeah then you see it start to perk back up a little bit so yeah basically what i think you're going to see is you're going to see storms weakening and then re-intensifying as they go to the east the question is do they weaken enough that they kind of skip over this area before they re-intensify here they're definitely going to be strong 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 weak 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 then fall apart a little bit right here and then get strong again right here. That's kind of the way it looks right now. And just to give you an idea, I'll show you the, the tornado parameter for the same time frame. Let me move this map up a little bit here so you can see this. So this is a significant tornado parameter. We'll go into today and look at that to the west. So yeah, pretty high significant tornado parameter. Look at that over here. We got three, four, fives, and sixes. That's pretty significant. That means there's going to probably be an outbreak somewhere to our west. But watch as that area pushes east it kind of falls apart during the overnight hours. The fuel for tornadoes dissipates. And then watch what happens as it goes to the east of us. You see it start to perk back up in eastern North Carolina. So that's kind of my thinking right now is we're going to see this kind of downturn in activity and then upturn. So it's certainly a day we want you to stay weather aware and really a night tonight into tomorrow morning. So please make sure your phones are fully charged, that you have them ready to go because the potential here is that overnight tonight and into early tomorrow morning, you're going to make sure that our, our app is on your phone. You're going to make sure you have everything kind of charged up. And that's the area we're going to watch. I think to our west is going to be the area we'll see the most widespread severe. The question is how much of that makes it into our area overnight and into tomorrow morning. So we'll be watching this closely today and tonight. you got all day to prepare Download our app, charge that bad boy up, have it next to your bed tonight, and just be ready. 3 to 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, we're going to be dealing with some strong and severe storms.